Hello, this is Vern, and today I'm going to share seven red flags that often fly under the radar, but show you that the guy you're into is emotionally broken and will probably waste months or years of your life and shatter your confidence and self-worth. Hello, this is Vern. Welcome to another edition of VernMendez.com. If you'd like to learn how to attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation games or stupid techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now to be notified of new episodes as they come out. If you're in a situation right now, whether you're starting to date someone and you're still single, or you've been in a relationship with someone but something feels really off and you have the haunting feeling in the back of your mind and in your heart constantly that the guy you're with is toxic or might be emotionally broken, I have a couple of goals for you in this video. The first one is not to bash men because I have deep compassion for what men go through is for you to learn to love yourself enough in action where it really counts so that you can identify through the patterns that I'm sharing with you right now, which are not black and white and are not necessarily the most obvious things at times, to know when it's time for you to either step back, step out of the relationship altogether, or perhaps raise your hand and ask for help. The second promise and the second value that I bring with this video for you is I want you to identify if in the seven red flags that I share, if there's perhaps one or two that you are displaying yourself because if that's the case, I need you to be so self-aware that you can change them instead of bringing toxicity to the relationship as well. Now, the first red flag that the guy that you're interested into or starting to date is emotionally broken. And by the way, let me define emotionally broken. Emotionally broken is someone who's bringing enough toxicity and enough pain to the relationship or the dating space where your life is worse directly as a result of being in that situationship in that relationship. Even though relationships are challenging, they should bring about a higher level of awareness, happiness, joy, fulfillment, passion, even confidence. When you're with the wrong person, those things are the opposite. So whenever you start noticing that things feel off in a big way, that you feel worse about yourself, that you feel worse about life, and you can directly relate it to the communication or the contact you have with someone, that's a sign that someone might be really toxic. The first sign that the guy you're into is emotionally broken is that he blames a lot of the pain in his life and in his past to the women and the people that he's been with. He plays the victim to people around him. He plays the victim to his past partners. Instead of saying, here's the my side of the story, but her side of the story is this, and kind of being more balanced. I know it's hard to do, but when the man is really upset, really anger issues towards people in his past, and is so keen on playing the victim without recognizing his own role in the situation, that is a sign of emotional brokenness. And let me share why that's important for you to recognize. Because what do you think is going to happen when something goes wrong between you and him? Do you think you have the insight to say, well, for the first time in my life right now, I recognize that I'm a bit of a dick sometimes. No, he's probably going to say, you're someone who is at fault and it's your situation and it's you the one who has to change. So not a good thing to step into. Number two is he's a guy who shames you and guilts you for having high standards. Now I recognize if you're working 100 hours a week and the guy's saying, hey, dude, you're working too much. Well, that's not uh, shaming you, that's being realistic. You can't really have a fulfilling relationship if you're working 100 hours a week. I don't care how awesome you are. But if he's the type of guy that when you're sure that you have things that you're interested in, things that are passions of yours, that are healthy, whether it's exercise or work, standards around not having sex with him early on, and he's guilting you and shaming you and mocking you for that, that's a sign of emotional brokenness because instead of recognizing that you're a woman of value, he wants to lower you to his standards and make sure that you both have a fun and exciting situation without noticing that there's a price to pay that will be heavier than it seems right now. The third red flag that the guy you're into is emotionally broken is someone whose intensity with you is highly disproportionate to the level of connection and to the depth of connection that you have with him. Here's what I mean. Sometimes it feels really good when someone validates you strongly, when the sparks are strong, when he's sharing that you're the most amazing, intelligent, beautiful woman he's ever met, and you start believing that, and he doesn't really know you, and he hasn't spent the time to be able to share those things with the level of authority that he seems to be sharing. 
The challenge with someone who has a high, high level of intensity that's disproportionate to reality is that he might be vicariously living through you and this experience, but something that comes so quickly, like a firecracker that explodes in the sky, is gone after a few seconds. So the same level of excitement that he creates that's not sustainable, that just comes all at once, that seems to come from nowhere, that almost sounds too good to be true, is potentially too good to be true, because that guy can disappear on a dime, that guy can ghost you, that guy can turn weird without any explanation. And the challenging thing is if the intensity is something that draws you to him and you lower your guard, and instead of continuing to get to know him, you go all in, then the hurt, the pain, and the challenge that takes place in your heart is significantly higher. Now, before I express points four through seven, if you're a single woman watching this video, there's a high probability that you're not exactly sure what is the number one reason, the actual root cause why you're still single. Uh, I know because I, a lot of women that I've worked with, even though they think they understand this, don't really know what's the root cause. So I've created a quiz that you can take in about 60 seconds and understand what's the real reason, the number one reason why you're still single, and better yet, what can you do about it? So if you're interested in taking this quiz, all you have to do is go to the first link on the description of this video. You will see the quiz page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and you'll be in the next minute or so on the way of understanding the real root cause, your real blind spot that's making you single, and what is your next best step based on your specific challenge that can help you turn this thing around and create the relationship that you want. Number four, he's overly, and I emphasize overly, pessimistic and cynical. Every once in a while, anyone can wake up in the wrong side of the bed and be a little bit negative and a little bit uh, Debbie Downer. But when the guy you're with is one that you're, who's overwhelmingly looking at life as the half empty glass constantly, who's too young to be the cynical, who's looking at the worst possibilities in life, who isn't able to dream with you. Whenever you share a dream, he's telling you why it can happen. That's not about you, that's about him. But the problem, my dear, if you stay with a guy like that, it's gonna become about you because you'll start believing the same way, you'll start lowering your expectations, lowering your hopes, and start looking at life in a more negative way. So when a guy is overly Debbie Downer, that's a sign that there's fear, pain, challenge, trauma even inside of him that needs to be addressed and is going to impact your life in more negative ways that you can imagine. Number five is he constantly find ways to energetically, passive aggressively, and even not passive aggressively directly, make you pay for your mistakes or for what he deems to be mistakes. When guys feel hurt and guys feel that you've done something to wrong them, even though you may not have done something to wrong them, this is just you're living your life, and they take the extra step of making sure that they do something to hurt you, that they say something that's really painful to you, that you've shared in your most vulnerable moments, that they take the time to create that anxiety in your life and almost seem to kind of enjoy the fact that you're now even, they're trying to even the playing field of pain. I'm in pain, therefore I'm gonna do things that make you pay for my pain. That's one of the most toxic experiences that you can have with a partner because you love this person or you really care about this person and yet he's willingly and kind of consciously hurting you until you're equal level of pain and then you're even. That's a sign that potentially you should run away from. If you're dating someone, it's early stages about that dating relationship, and this is taking place, I would say you can walk away safely and, on, and not really look back thinking that you missed on anything great. Number six is he's a guy who gaslights you. He's a guy who turns your words against you. He's a guy that you constantly have the feeling that you're going crazy. You do something and he tries to play it like you did the worst thing even though you didn't and you said some things and he's saying that you didn't say them or he's twisting your words around or even worse, he's doing things in front of your face and then letting you know that he didn't do them, that you're crazy, that you're imagining stuff. When you connect with someone who has this tendency again, that's one of the ones like the previous one that's worth stepping away from, if not ending the relationship right away, really getting some space to recognize what's taking place and, and sometimes Ending the relationship is what needs to take place because that person is going to need a lot of work and a lot of therapy <laughs> to be able to change it. And the last one is his jokes, number seven, are passive-aggressive, 
hurtful and tactless. Instead of recognizing that he has needs that he needs to express, instead of recognizing that he has faults, he uses humor that's painful to lessen his feeling of pain. Similar to the one where he's doing things to hurt you, in this one, it's a joke. You're being so uptight, and but he's sharing things that are really hurtful about you, about your intelligence, about your weight, about your goals, about your family. Whenever that's taking place, the guy's passive aggressive and hurtful, and he's playing it as a joke, and when you express to him that it's not really funny, he doubles down and says that you're so uptight that you should be laughing at his jokes. That's a really painful, hurtful sign that the guy is emotionally broken and lacks empathy and lacks that capacity to understand what's going on in your heart. Hope this is helpful and useful. If it is, and you want to understand why it is that you're single right now, and how you can turn this around, then go to the free quiz underneath this video, take it, and in about 60 seconds you'll understand more than you have in years. If you like the video, click like or thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel if you want to be notified of new episodes. And last but not least, if you're watching this video, and you've watched many other videos, and you understand that you need more than this type of help, you want hand-holding, accountability, and custom planning for the type of life and the type of relationship you want, then second link in the description of this video will allow you to apply to work with me. Thank you so much for allowing me into your heart, into your home, into your phone, and as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.